trying to fight the demons in my mind I'll prevail with every battle if I'm right Guess my aim was off the target's out of sight Would I be better if I left it all behind? Cause we can find a way We can find a way
Never gonna take 
trying to fight the demons in my mind I'll prevail with every battle if I'm right Guess my aim was off the target's out of sight Would I be better if I left it all behind? Cause we can find a way We can find a way Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome into the Skyward Series Challenger 2v2 playoffs, kicking it off all night long. If you are excited for the next three hours, please let me know in the chat. Give me some hype. And yes, good for him graduating, right, Bizzle? Amen to that. There it is. Thank you, Bizzle. Thank you, Bizzle. This place behind. like everybody's here folks should we get things started should we get things started here like everyone's taking the field ladies and gentlemen let's get things popping here comes mike going up for a nice touch you do right off the rip deadly chip for six months brother thank you so much homie hope you're doing good appreciate you six months is crazy Ooh, mike with a nice donkey do rowdy singer though gonna try to get that past Midnight Sack, who almost gets a Donkey Doo right into the opponent's net. But unfortunately for him, a little wide. And Rowdy Singer with a shot on net right off the middle field. 30 seconds into game number one. And it is 1-0 playing for Dakota. Now remember, it is the best of seven, folks. This is going to be a long one. Every game tonight is going to be a nail-biter. 
have you sitting on the edge of your seat as we see another shot what a save from cereal unbelievable i thought that shot was going to be beautiful and Rowdy Singer with a nice little butt bump down. Midnight Sack is going to bangerize that ball to the Kerner, getting it past one. Going for some beautiful spinny dudes. Can't quite execute a play, and Serial getting another save. And here comes Rowdy, restocking on some boosticles. Looking for his teammate. Pops it up just a little bit too high. And Serial <clears throat> is going to go for an attack. Never mind. Rowdy Singer staying on the ball, trying to put pressure on the Pigeon Boys. If you don't know who the Pigeon Boys are, you will now as they always wear the Pigeons. And as I say that, they score. They did it just for me, I am swear. Baba boy. A little ping pong, bing bong, double decker combo, midnight sack to Mike Rithjen. What a nice play there. It is now tied 1-1, one to one, 346 on the clock. Rowdy Singer going up for some beautiful spinny dudes. Can he get it all the way in with a... Bar down shot returns the favor right off the kickoff. What a spinny do. Little doubly do off the rip. That was impressive. You don't get to see those that often at this rank, but you could tell that was definitely something that he was very excited for getting. 100%. I need a double tap, oh my goodness! You know, something like that. And nice Isaac trying to get that top left, but Serial holding that defense down for playing for Dakota. Serial trying to get it past the full defense, and Mike just holding on strong. Rowdy Singer with a whiffinator, 3,000. Serial cannot quite get that push down. And Richin over to Sack, who's going to try to get a shot on that, but Rowdy with a beautiful save he and Mike pushing that ball back twice. A donkey do on both opponents. <laughs> Pristine Chaos, thank you for the follow. Welcome in Midnight Sack. Trying to do some solo play action. Can't quite get any power behind that touch. And Serial going up with some spinning. He was going to try to get it past Mike Richin, but can't quite get the touch he was looking for. But maybe a mid pass, but a double commit. But Serial bumps one, and Midnight Sack was there for the clear. For once, a double commit actually worked out in their favor. You don't see double commits work out often, but you know, sometimes it happens, but not when they miss the ball off the backboard and Serial is there and it is three to one playing for Dakota. Taking another goal in the second half of this series, 224 on the clock, three to one. Pigeon boys have a little catching up to do. A Vixily, welcome in. How are you doing? The prediction is still up, folks. If you have not casted your bounty points and you drop a follow, you get 300 of them to bet on who you think is going to take home the dub in this series. Oh my gosh, Serial. What a beautiful shot there. Four to one, two twelve on the clock. Twelve seconds since the last goal was scored. Dakota playing for Dakota is really trying to take away game number one. Riley trying to get that touch. You can't quite get it. And Mike, oh, shoots just a titch too high off that crossbar. The clear out by Rowdy Singer. Rowdy Singer trying to hold that pressure, but Midnight Sack is there for the banger. And here comes Serial. Gets it past one. Can he get it past two? No, Mike Richin with the beautiful donkey do. Trying to passerize that ball to midnight sack, but it goes over his face a little bit. And now there's no one back. But Rowdy just can't quite execute a shot on net there. Mike Richin getting it past Rowdy. Oh, a little accidental back pass is a touch too far, but Midnight Sack is there from Mike. Can he get it all the way? No, Serial there for a nice little boop and ball in LRL. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome into the stream. Hope you're having a good day. Izzel said he's not even worried about it. Oh my goodness, but Midnight Sack, if you keep getting whiffinator 3000s like that, I would start to worry at least for this game number one with a minute left on the clock. Playing for Dakota is still up by three goals. That sack trying to get that ball. Can't quite get to it. 
Monty. Maybe a centerized touch, but Rowdy Singer trying to get that flicky do. Oh, goodness gracious. Here comes Mike. Paparazzing that ball. Rowdy Singer bangerizing that ball back to the Kerner. Midnight Sack getting a weird touchy do, but it's going mid. Cyril's going to try to get a shot on net, but Mike Rischen is able to get that safety do. But with 30 seconds left, I'm thinking game one is going to playing for Dakota. It's going to be very hard, especially with Wiffen 83,000s for Midnight Sack and the Pigeon Boys themselves to get a couple more goals, but they're going to at least get one, folks. Two goal deficit, 11 seconds to go. It is possible, but going to be a challenge. You know, it, everything's on the line tonight, Bizzle. The winners take all. This is a single elimination playoffs. Everyone has fought valiantly and hard all season long. A grueling 10-week span for all to boil down to this. And game one is going to playing for Dakota. GG's all on the board. Beautiful to see. I mean, as far as shots on Neko and saves, it's, it's not that big of a difference. Playing Dakota did have two more shots on net, which would equate to the two goal differential. Dakota had two saves and Pigeon Boys had three. Each team's had two assists. I mean, that's pretty darn close. Rowdy's your former teammate. Well, that's a W that you're still cheering for Rowdy. Ballin, we, I'm sure Rowdy appreciates that. Just waiting for Mike Christian to get ready. As soon as Mike checks up, I will check up as well. And we will move on to game number two, folks. Looking like they heard me. So we gonna move it on. Alrighty, and we're off to game number two. Remember, playing for Dakota took the early W in this series. But as a best of seven, <laughs> some teams will pop off early and then their flame will go out a little bit and the other teams will rekindle their flames like a fallen phoenix. You never know what's going to happen in these best of sevens. All I can say is I call it how I see it and Riston's going to get a nice pass over to Midnight Sack who's going to try to get that middle rise, but Rowdy is there for the banger. Riston right over to Rowdy. Right back to Midnight Sack, who's going to do a little spinny do, drifty do, maybe get a nice touchy do. Midnight Sack trying to get that ball centerized, but Rowdy is not having it. Rowdy trying to get some dribble action, just could not maintain enough control to get a flicky do. Midnight trying to get a nice shot on that cereal, saying no thank you. But getting dunkerized by Mike and Rowdy is there for the bang out. Oh, Midnight Sack with the bump on Rowdy. Mike trying to get it over to Midnight Sack who just can't get to it. Just out of fingertip range. Almost had a nice passing play there. It is still zero to zero as Mike bangerizes to the left side corner of his side of the field. Nice little pinchy do there. But it's a little too high of a bounce for Midnight Sack to get to. Rowdy up to Serio, who tries to redirectorize it, but instead popperizes it weirdly. Mike getting a nice little touchy do. Midnight doesn't know where to go. Rowdy bangerizing that ball back to Mike. Back to mid. Back to Rowdy, who's going to try to keep that pressure on Midnight. Serio managing to fly backwards and getting a nice touchy do, but the ball is centered, but the ball is cleared by Rowdy. Folks, this is a completely different game. Then game number one, zero one of the teams are giving up any goals two minutes into this match. If this isn't a close flipping game, I don't know what is because this is beautiful. Nice sack with a nice little banger. Here comes Rowdy. Take his time, get him to get a nice little flicky do. But Mike was there for the read. It's a little scary, and Mike gets it past Serial, who's been holding the defense like a brick wall. Finally finding a missing 
gap in the bricks. Mike Richin getting goal number one for game two. Pigeon Boys up two or one to zero. 2.39 on the clock. Here comes Rowdy. Getting in a little mid pass there, but Mike with a shot on that. Can Serial get to it? No, he cannot. And Mike is going to be two for two. Half of the game exactly left on the clock. And Pitchin Boys take a two goal lead. Whoopsie doo. Whiffinator 3000 Ooh. is all you can say with that one. Zero bang rising that ball. Oh goodness, a awkward catchy dude. Serial trying to get that shot on that, but shooting that super wide, folks. Mike though, getting a nice little touchy dude. Serial trying to get that ball centerized. Midnight sack saying no thank you, but Rowdy's gonna have a shot on that. It's looking like it's gonna be good, and yes, it is. And Mike can't get to it. And playing for Dakota puts a point on the board. Two to one, 204 on the clock playing for Dakota. No longer getting shut out in this game, too. Nice little touchy there, there. Oh, Midnight Sack trying to get another shot on that. And Serial pushed back a little too far going for that save he do. Pigeon Boys returning that. They want that two goal lead and they bounce right back, firing right at the net. Pigeon Boys, three to one. Now, remember, folks, Pigeon Boys were in the top four of the entire league this season. So they are favored to win this game, but playing for Dakota has played very well this season as well. This is going to be a tough one. Oh my gosh, Rowdy Singer going right back at it. Self passy do. Midnight sack with the midnight whiffinator 3000, and that's going to allow the one gap deficit to return for playing for Dakota. Here comes Mike going up the wall. Try to get a weird touchy do. Maybe a pitch you do. No, Rowdy Singer bangerizing up all the way. Midnight Sack trying to get that centerized. Mike can't quite get to it. Serial trying to get it past. But wait. Midnight Sack passing it backwards. Serial going to get a shot on net. But Mike Richard with a beautiful save. And Serial missing the opponent's back boost. Going to have to go get some pad collections going on. Nice pinch you do there by Mike. But it's a little wide. Oh, double commit. Could that be deadly for Mike getting a shot on net? But it's a little wide. Oh, no. Almost an own goal. Can Rowdy get a savey do? My goodness, that was close. But wait, the pinchy do. It's going for the Pigeon Boys net. Can Midnight Sack get to it? No, he cannot. And Serial getting the donkey do. Manages to get the score tied. 3-3 three to three with 53 seconds left on the clock. Ooh. Indeed. An unfortunate series of events, Bizzle. This is intense. Like I said, this is going to be a nail biter. And Mike Richin just drives right past the darn ball. Nyeong. Here comes Serial. Doing some spinny doos. Oh my gosh, Midnight Sack getting another goal. Crawdad Canoodle, thank you for the follow. What a shot there by Midnight Sack. They regain the lead for the fourth time. 27 seconds left to go. My goodness. Ooh, and Mike coming in hot with another one. We're going to have ourselves a tied series. Ten seconds left playing for Dakota. I do not know if they are going to make this.
And yes, game number two is going to the Pigeon Boys, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tied series one to one. Oh my goodness. This is some good good action folks oh and just real quick so y'all can see the fit got me a nice dress shirt beard on point today you know you know how we do you know how we do Everyone ready to go? Let's move on to game number three. Predictions are up. They are about to disappear. Oh, dad you got 300 points you can spend them i think you only have about a minute and change left before it disappears remember we are tied one to one it is hard like i was saying earlier pigeon boys are favored to win as they did better off in the season but playing for dakota is also a strong team this is going to be a beautiful matchup this is definitely as you can tell not going to be a shutout for either team wait a second no, Mike holding that gym strong on the defense. Here comes Serial, though. Trying to get that ball centerized. Oh, maybe a shot. Oh, a close one by Rowdy. Almost getting the angle. Nice try there, bud. Midnight with the back pass to Mike. Can he get that centerized? No, Serial is there with a banger downfield, but Midnight Sack with a shot on net and Rowdy Singer with a nice, beautiful save and going for an open net and playing for Dakota will take the lead. One to zero, 351 on the clock. Baba boy. Mike with a shot on net. Serial can't get to it. What a shot. Had some heat behind that ball, folks. Mike was up early enough to not let Serial get to the net, and it's tied 1-1, one 3-33 one, on the clock. We have a palindrome for all you math nerds out there. 1-3-3-3-1, one, three, 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 one. the same forwards as it is backwards. But now it's long gone. Mike going to try to get an early shot here. Rowdy with the Whiffinator. And Mike with the follow-up. And the Pigeon Boys will take the lead. 2-1. to 327 on the clock. Oh, man, that sack bang rising that ball to Serial. Serial going to try to take this up the sidewall. He's going to try to get that ball centerized. Maybe or get a shot on net. But either way, it was just too awkward for anyone else to go for it on his team. A.K.A. Rowdy. Serial going to try to clear this off the back wall. But pushes it right down the mic. Who's going to get a shot on net. But it's Post Malone out. The tickets are for sale. And Rowdy banging it downfield, trying to get some power behind it. But Mike is able to get to it in time and get a beautiful save he do. What a save there from Midnight Sack. Tono, or tons of fun. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in. 
You have a mega crush on cereal. Oh my goodness. Well, you came to the right place to watch cereal play. That's for sure. Mike can try to take this down. Oh, doesn't get the touch, but does get the boost and dodges the demo. Now Rowdy has a one-on-one -on -one situation. Can he get that pass over to Serial? Oh, Mike almost touching it. Serial thinking he was going to, and it still disrupts the play regardless. Nice talk you do there by Midnight Sack and try to get this ball centerized, but Rowdy with the banger out the Kerner. Mike with a whiffinator 3000. Rowdy going to try to take this down. Midnight Sack is the only one back. But manages to defend the Rowdy Singer attack, but Serial with a dime up. Hello? Whether it was a pass or a shot, it had to have been helped with Rowdy because Midnight Sack was there for the save. What a play. It is tied 2-2. Two two. Pigeon Boys against playing for Dakota. Who is taking game three? That might set the pace of this series as it's been close. Non-stop back and forth. Rut row raggy, but Serial is there for the clear. Oh, Mike manages to get the touch that time. I was thinking it was going to be a whiffinator. Rowdy trying to get that shot on net, but Midnight Sack getting a nice little backflip touchy do. And Mike Rithjen with the beautiful donkey do. Serial not quite getting to it. Rowdy is up, clearing it off the backboard. Here comes Midnight. He's going to try to get that ball centered for Mike. Can Mike get the shot on net? No, it's wide. But wait, Midnight is there for the follow through, and Pigeon Boys will regain the lead three to two. Baba boy. Ladies and gentlemen. Nice little pinchy do there, folks. Oh, a little double commit. Is that going to hurt the offense of Pigeon Boys? Oh, Rowdy bangerizing that ball way downfield. Mike pop popping it up high. It's a little wide. Serial's going to bangerize it down to Rowdy with a little catchy do. Rowdy going to try to not let it go in front of the net. It's a little risky looking over there, but wait a second. There's a breakaway. Mike, though, holding the gym, taking a demo on Rowdy. What a defensive maneuver. And Midnight is going to try to get that ball in the net, but what a clear out. 30 seconds left. Pigeon Boys is still up by one. Can playing for Dakota get another goal? Tie this up for some OT. We have not seen any OT yet, folks. Love to see it. Rowdy pop rising that ball up high. It's a banger on net. But Mike with a beautiful save. There's only time for maybe one more play. Serial trying to keep the ball alive. Can he get it to his teammate? It's dunkerized by Mike. It's still up in the air, though. What's going to happen? It's still up. Serial has to catch it. But no, that's going to be it. And game three is going to go to Pigeon Boys. And Timmy B wears shorts. Welcome in, my friend. One of my new mods. Give him a round of applause. Give him some huggy doos with the exclamation mark hug. That is Timmy. Timmy B wears jorts. But back to the game. Look at that. Nine shots for nine shots. The only difference is playing for Dakota had two less saves, which could be that factor that was decided. Looking like Baltini is getting subbed in, but for whom? Is it going to be for Serial? Yes, it is. It's going to be for Serial. Topher is here as well, folks. Holy. Looks like Pigeon Boys wanted to use that full minute, which is okay. And Bezo is here as well. That means the desk is watching. Game number four. Remember, Pigeon Boys are up two to one against playing for Dakota in the series. Best of seven. Let's see what's going to happen here. Christine Chaos cheering on Boltini. 
Oh, nice little 50 there. That's looking like that's going to be good. Rowdy Singer getting an early goal. Five seconds in off the kickoff. Playing for Dakota. Little double commit from the Pigeon Boys. Seem to have hurt them. As that goal went perfectly mid in the net. Wait a second. Oh, Baltini trying to go for a crazy shot on net. Midnight sack. Oh, Baltini just taking all the boosticles from Midnight, but keeps getting bumped away. So here comes Rowdy trying to get some spinny dudes, trying to get another touchy do. Hits it weirdly. Can't get a bump. Wait, never mind. Rowdy pushing Midnight sack. Baltini. Wait, leaving the net wide open for Mike to return to favor. One to one, Baltini. I don't know what she was looking for there, but the boost was not it. It is now tied. One to one. And Isaac is going to bangerize this ball. Ooh, a little boop out. Baltini getting to that clanger. Midnight Sack trying to put some pressure back, but Rowdy Singer going for a solo play. Ooh, a little wide, and Midnight Sack is there for the clear out. Can he get the extra touch? No, Baltini does. It's off the backboard. Rowdy has to finish, but Mike Richard with the beautiful saves. But wait a second. Baltini is back at it again. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at this. An onslaught of shots on net from playing for Dakota. Pigeon Boys is down two to one, just under four minutes to go. Howdy Singer with a nice little banger. Bangerizing that ball down the field. Pigeon Boys on the attack with Mike Richin on the front line. Rowdy Singer. Trying to get that ball passed. But Midnight Zach is saying, no, thank you. We want to tie this game up right now, but with 3.30 left. <clears throat> plenty of time for that to happen. No, Topher. Um, this is Baltini's old team before she joined us. But we cheer for Baltini anyway, right? Well, at least y'all can. I'm a caster. I can't cheer for nobody. I cheer for everybody to get some clips. You know what I'm saying? Well, Rowdy... Taking a little risky there, putting it in front of the net, but managing not to get shot on in the process. Oh, but Midnight Sack with a banger. What a slot. Top right corner. A kerner. Boggle. 15 minute overtime. Oh, my Lord. My voice is not cheering for that. <laughs> Baltini, wait a second. Oh my goodness, gets a little double tap. Every time Pigeon Boys tie, playing for Dakota just retaliates right back at it. Three to two, three minutes exactly on the clock. My goodness. Ooh. Out of singer going up for some spinny dudes. Can he get another shot on net? Oh my gosh. Playing for Dakota running away with a four to two lead now. He got a little bit of a cushion. It was going to be wide if Mike didn't touch that ball. But you know, you have to go for that save regardless. Excuse me. Oh my gosh, Baltini almost getting dunked on. Wait a second, the ball centerized to Baltini. Rowdy is gonna come in hot. Gonna try to pass this ball. Can't quite get the touch he wanted. Mike is gonna take that ball down. Vision heads are going crazy. Mike. 
Oh my gosh, what a dunk from Rowdy, but it's a little wide. Can he finish it up? Yes, he can. Playing for Dakota, 5-2. to 2.03 two on the clock. Playing for Dakota is coming in hot. What a shot indeed. Wait a second. Off the ceiling. Rowdy is going to try to clear this ball down. Getting it past the defense, but it's a little wide. Baltini runs away from it. Mike has a little bit of time. To clear that down. Baltini pops it up. Midnight Sack is up for the ball. They'll try to get a pass. He do, but Mike gets taken out by Baltini. And Rowdy Singer gets a save. He do. Rowdy tries to play. Little fakey do there, but can't quite get to it. Sorry for the noise. Nice, Zach, trying to get that shot on net, but folks, a little breakaway going, and it's looking like 6 to 2, 107 on the clock. Playing for Dakota, going for the Barca at this point. You don't know what the Barca is, that's called the Barcelona. That's an 8 to 2 score in one game. About to get in the clear off the back wall. Midnight sack trying to get that clear. Ooh, Rowdy was trying to do something a little crazy there. Baltini getting a nice little back boop. But Mike banging around in that ball midfield. Midnight sack going to get to it in time. But Rowdy Singer is there for the bang out. Almost getting to that 30 second marker. Keeping that pressure. Mike with a little catchy do. Rowdy trying to get that donkey do, but here comes Midnight. Oh, hitting it a little awkwardly. Baltini's going to bangerize that ball down the field. Mike's going to boop it away. Rowdy's going to try to bang it off that back wall. Maybe a passing play, but Baltini runs into Rowdy. I think there's a little miscommunication there between playing for Dakota. Baltini managing to get a nice little touchy do. No time left on the clock, but it's still popped up in the air. Rowdy going for another shot. Mike is just sitting there chilling. <clears throat> what a game. What a game. Playing for Dakota will take game number four. What a series, folks. This is close. Back and forth battles. To see who's going to win it all. This is what you would call the quarter finals. Excuse me one second. I'm running to grab a water. I will be back in a second. Please and thank you. Alrighty, I made it back just in time. Let's go. Ah, agua. Good for you. Alrighty, we are in game five, and it is tied two to two in this series, folks. I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm thinking this may go to a game seven. I mean, this is close. Oh, Mike getting a nice 50. Not letting the shot happen on net, but Midnight Sack. Oh, just getting to it in time. Not allowing Rowdy to get a goal. Midnight Sack getting it past one, but getting taken out by Rowdy. Baltini has a little bit of time to maybe make a play happen, but Mike is going to get a boop. 
down the field. That was Baltini. Mike trying to get that pressure in there. Oh no, a double commit with the save. Rule wonder teammate and midnight sack is there for the goal. Ooh. My goodness. You can't even make that up when your own teammate rule ones you. Whoopsie. Uh yeah. Baltini jumps really far away and a nice little bing bong ping pong double decker combo pigeon boys up two to zero four minutes and three seconds left controller blip no that's not a controller blip that's a finger blip cereal that's a oopsies I pushed the wrong button no matter what they say what excuse they make up they pushed the wrong button they had a brain fart that's what happened We've all been there. We've all done it. Wait. Oh, a shot on net. What a save there by Rowdy. But Midnight Sack's going to try to put one on as well. But Baltini's there for the clear out. Restocking on some boosticles. Mike is going to bang that all the way downfield. Looking like it may be happy, but it's a little wide. And Rowdy there for the boop away. Mike trying to keep that ball centerized. Rowdy can't get to it. Neither can Midnight Sack. A Whiffinator level 6,000. And the ball is taken away from the front of the goal for playing for Dakota. But wait a second. A bouncy do off the sidewall. Look at that passing play. Midnight sack to Mike Richin. It's 3-0, 3 315 on the clock. Don't know what happened to playing for Dakota from last game, but this has been a back and forth series. But if the pattern continues, Pigeon Boys would win game seven, statistically speaking, because they have won every odd numbered game. Nice little savey do there. But wait, oh, Baltini just can't quite get to it, and Mike is going to clear it out to midnight. Midnight, trying to get that ball centerized yet again. But wait, Rowdy is there. Off the wall. Rowdy trying to get a nice little passy do, but Mike is not falling for the trickery spinny do's. Baltini going up for it. Oh, midnight sack keeping that pressure. Rowdy with a nice little boop away. Oh, gets another touch, but Mike there for the center. Baltini there for the clear away. Wait a second. A play is happening. The second half of this game has started, and maybe it's going to be a different one. Oh, Mike holding that defense down. Beautiful, beautiful defense there. Rowdy trying to get it past Midnight Sack. And that sack back to Mike. Midnight hitting a little wide. Here comes Rowdy. Out to Baltini. Mike Richards there instead. Oh, Midnight trying to get that shot on net. Hits it just a little too hard and awkwardly for that to go in. Rowdy trying to get that ball centerized. Midnight sack bangerizing that ball to the Kerner. Getting a pass, Rowdy. But wait a second. Rowdy is rotating ball side, messing up his teammate. Baltini cannot push that way. And then they're, oh, what a save by Rowdy. What's going on, Senko? How's it going? How did MM do? Here comes Baltini going up in the air with some spinny dues. Oh, a little pass to do. Maybe to Rowdy. No, Mike is there. And Midnight is going to try to get that open net shot, but it's a little high. Can there be a follow up shot from Mike? Oh, Richin is up there, though. And he get Baltini. Take Baltini out. Uh-oh, stinky. Yes, 4-0, 48 seconds. Pigeon Boys definitely running away. You got two Brazils, Cinco? That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Cinco, don't tell anybody, but I have you guys for the W for the whole thing. 
I mean, anyway, back to it. Pigeon Boys, 4-0 to zero against playing for Dakota. Definitely taking game five. My goodness. Yep, Topher didn't hear anything, folks. We're good. Wait a second. Almost. Midnight's going to keep that pressure, though. 15 seconds left. Oh, man. Well, Pigeon Boys now have three W's here. They just need one more to finish the series. Both having within two point differential. Pigeon Boys, 662 and 660. That's kind of cool. Geeking out over here, folks. I'm geeking out. But listen. If the Pigeon Boys win... This next game, they move on to the semifinals to play the Milky Militia. But if playing Dakota, if they win game six, we move on to game seven. Where it is a sudden death round. Winner takes all and moves on. A lot of pressure here for the both teams for the next game. Game six is going to be intense. Hold on, you're not going to have sound for a second. Uh-oh. Stinky. Little flicky do. Wait a second. Rowdy Singer playing for Dakota and not giving up just yet. Getting an early goal. It's so funny because every game in this series, one team has dominated more than the other for the most part. We've only had two close games this entire series. And in game six, we may be moving on to game seven if playing for Dakota keeps playing the way they're playing right now. Wait a second. They're both sitting there. I don't know what's happening. But goals have been scored. The game continues. There was a disconnect after somebody scored. The game must keep going. What's up, Varso? How you doing? Yep, Bizzle, it's all your fault. Oh, but Mike is back. Only a three-goal deficit. And literally almost four and a half minutes left. I mean, anything could happen here. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Mike comes back from being disconnected and goes... Or that top right slotty. Look at that touchy do right there. Scudoosh. Beautiful shot. Pigeon Boy said, hey, just because y'all got a little head start doesn't mean we're not coming back for this dub. Oh, watching for some teammates. Nice, Varso. Nice. Maltini trying to get that shot on that, but it gets taken away. Oh, my goodness. That's the old 50 dude right there. Oh, man. Double commit. And it's looking like playing for Dakota scrambling as a team right now. Oh, but Rowdy manages to not let Mike get a shot on that. But Midnight Sack is going to try to keep that pressure off the midfield. Hold on a second. Baltini 
Nope, hits it just a little too weird, but wait a second. Rowdy is going to try to get a shot, but it's a little high off the crossbar. Midnight Sack going to bangerize that ball down, getting it past Baltini. Trying to shoot that ball, but it's a little wide. Rowdy Singer going to bangerize that ball back to Mike, who's going to bangerize it to the corner. Baltini bangerizing it back to the middle. My goodness. You think we're watching a lot higher gameplay than C1-C2 right now. This is intense, ladies and gents. If I was going camping, I would be intense. Heh, 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 heh. I know I'm so funny. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll be here all week. Wait a second. Mike Richard finds the slot, finds the opening. It's now only a one goal differential with 259 on the clock. Playing for Dakota is quickly losing that three goal lead. Rowdy pushes Midnight away. Thank you for the camera angle. Rocket League, we appreciate it. I get a nice little clear, but wait, Rowdy's gonna get a shot right back. And never mind, Dakota. Say, hey, um, yeah, we let y'all get two, but we gonna get one for ourselves again. We're gonna maintain at least a two goal cushion. We still have a little over half of this game left. This game is nuts. Yep, but then the lead went right back up, Varso. We have ourselves a series for sure. I'm still thinking it's going to be Game 7. I always cheer for Game 7, no matter who I'm cheering for. Because, I mean, it's for the content, you know? Boltini trying to get that ball center eye. Whoopsie-doo. Flies it off. The car. Mike is sunk by Rowdy, but it's off the ceiling. Midnight Sack's going to get a catchy do. Baltini taking her time, trying to get that ball centerized, but here comes Mike banging over to Baltini. Baltini up, up again. Wait a second. Over to Rowdy. Rowdy back to center, but Mike with the banger over to Midnight Sack, who's up and cherry picking away. Rowdy with the bang out. We still have a minute 50 on the clock, folks. Jesus, we have so much time. It's ridiculous. Baltini got to get a nice little clear. Hold on a second. Mike going to try to shoot on that, but shoots it a little, a little too wide there. We just saw some insurance. <laughs> nice. Rowdy with the little backflip you do. Oh, man, the Pigeon Boys are trying to make some moves, trying to make something happen. But Rowdy and Baltini are not letting it happen. Uh-oh, it's looking like this might be close. Crouton Dust with the rate of seven. Baltini will get goal number five, five to two. Crouton Dust, thanks for the raid, brother. So if y'all didn't know, Crouton Dust was casting a game as well. How did the series go? Who won? Who lost? What was the score? Let us know. And Crouton Dust will be joining me in the casting booth for the next series. Winner will be playing in that series as well. Well, that night, that's fine. I am 32 years old, so it's all good in the hood. Typhoon, Crouton can say whatever he pleases, my friend. Baltini bangerizing that ball down. Oh my goodness, what a save. Mike Richard. What a save. But well, we are definitely moving on to game number seven. No, lit. I am not. Never. I'm not getting trapped. I love my freedom. We are moving on to game seven, folks. This is for all the marbles. All the marbles. My goodness. Rowdy definitely being MVP tonight for playing for Dakota. Jiminy crickets
Well, Knight, you have more wives than me, but you don't have more girlfriends. We got him. <laughs> Just kidding. Tell you what, the single life is the best. No one tells you what to do. Do whatever you want, whenever you want. I've been single for like two and a half years, brother. Uh, I don't. I kind of enjoy it too much. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Typhoon. <laughs> All right, folks, remember, this is game seven. This is for all the marbles. These are the series we love to see. Everyone's playing their hearts out. You have one team dominating over another team back and forth. The only close game in this whole series, I believe, was game three. Uh-oh. Boltini with the own goal. Can't get the save he do. And Midnight Sack is going to get that beautiful first goal for the Pigeon Boys starting off game seven, one to zero. Yes, Varso. Can Dakota break the odd game curse? The Pigeon Boys have won every odd game, and Dakota has won every even game. Like, I can't even make this up. It's literally been back and forth the whole time. Like, it's a gladiator fight in the Coliseum back in the day when I was young. Boltini trying to get a shot on net. Oh, but it's cleared out by Midnight Sack. But here comes Rowdy trying to get that ball centerized, but Mike just not letting it happen. But Rowdy is not giving up on that pressure, but Midnight Sack isn't giving up on that defense. Well, I understand where you're coming from. I just don't care to look, you know what I mean? Had that a long, long, long time ago. And when that didn't work out, I was just like, you know what? I'm Gucci. I'm going to just enjoy my life the way I want to. Oh, man. Baltini getting through the defense. Look at that catchy do and holding the gym. A double commit on the defense from Pigeon Boys. That's very unlike them, but it's tied one to one. Will we have overtime in game seven? My goodness. Ooh, Baltini trying to go gym again, but Mike at least manages to let it go to the corner. And here comes Sack with the pitch and head, trying to pass a rise that ball mid. But here comes Baltini. Mike, last one back. Manages to get the touch you do. But wait a second, Rowdy. Oh, Midnight gets in a little poppy do, and Mike getting the boost stolen from him, but doesn't matter. He gets that clear down the field. Rowdy now going up. Midnight sack over to Mike. Can he get the shot? It's a little wide and a touch from Rowdy. Cleared it away from the front of the net. Mike disrupting Boltini. Rowdy, though, trying to get this past Midnight sack. My goodness. Rut row, Raggy. There's a jumble up in that corner right there. Kerner holding an MVP on defense for real. Oh, what a save of Baltini. Mike has the shot. Baltini says, no, you do not. Half of the game left, and it's still tied one-to-one. -one. This is definitely the closest game so far. A shot on net. Ooh! Post Malone tickets for sale. Wait a second. Wait a second. Rowdy, hello? Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, my God. What a play there and that's a shout out to my buddy Flo I have that clip from him saying it one time when I was peeking in hoops dunking you know GC3 no big deal oh I thought Mike was going to return the favor but Dakota is still up by one two minutes on the clock remain here comes Rowdy 
Trying to go for another shot. Midnight sack getting a touchy do. Mike is up for it, but wait. Oh, a pinchy do down the field. It's up in the air. Can anyone follow it up in time? No, they cannot. A double commit, though, from Dakota. And Mike is able to get that touch. Wait a second. He has an open net. He can just shoot it right in. And he does. And it's tied 2-2. Two 131 two, on the clock. We have ourselves a palindrome. 2-1-3-1-2. Two, one, one, two. It is the same fours as it is backwards. That's the second palindrome of the night. Bagel Woman, welcome in. We have ourselves a crazy game seven. Are we going to overtime? I feel it in my bones. I just want to believe that there will be an overtime. Mike bangerizing that ball down. Baltini popping it up. Hold on, Midnight getting that little touchy do. My goodness gracious. Uh oh, demo. It's popped up high. Oh, Rowdy trying to go gym, but can't quite. Folks, we have 45 seconds on the clock. And that's a shot on net, but Rowdy is there for the boop away. Overtime might be coming. It might be coming. We're about to see that 30 second marker on the field. A boom. Maltini, though, with an open net shot. Midnight, can he get to it? No, he can't. Dakota gains the lead with 25 seconds left on the clock. My goodness, this is close. 36 viewers in the chat right now. Let's get a huge pog. Ruh -ruh raggy. Wait a second. Oh, 10 seconds left though. Pigeon boys will have to do something now. Oh, and they did. You heard me. They heard me. They just got a Baba Booey. Bing bong, ping pong, double decker combo. They tied it up with four seconds left on the clock. Folks, we may be getting an overtime here in game seven. It's every caster's dream. It's the wish we always wish from the genie bottle. But hold on a second. A kickoff goal for Midnight Sack. They regain the lead with one second left. What happened? Oh no. Oh, no, how the turns have tabled. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pigeon Boys. The ball is still up, but they have so much room to get it down the field. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, it's saved. No one is there for it. And that's going to be it. Pigeon Boys will take the W, getting a kickoff goal with one second left. My goodness. What a series. That was the most beautiful series I have ever seen in my entire life. That was amazing. Congratulations, Pigeon Boys. You move on to the semifinals. Playing for Dakota. GG's. Y'all played your flipping hearts out 100%. You cannot leave tonight's game with your heads held low, Dakota. Y'all played valiantly but pigeon boys will be moving on i'm gonna take a quick break here i'm gonna get set up to be co-casting with my boy crouton dust give me a few i'll be right back folks don't go anywhere we'll be right back
Alrighty, guys, I'm here with my buddy Crouton. Mr. Crouton, yeah. how are you? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm a little up. I'm gonna be honest. The uh, the brutality I witnessed from MM Rush, it still got me feeling like a, a little a little a little scared. You know, when you see something like that, it's just it's scarring. Yeah, he's two Brazils. That's insane. Two? Yeah, no. They they came in out of the gates, game one Brazil, and in poetic fashion, they ended game four, took them out with another Brazil. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I voted for them all the way. So, <laughs> I mean, they, they do not disappoint. I had the I had the pleasure of casting them a couple games throughout the season, and mm. they're they're just when they're hot, they're hot. And when they're not hot, they still like they pull each other up and like backpack their their teammates like it's it's insane absolutely yeah uh it's it's a bit unfortunate i don't know if you remember me in the green room i picked ready and stefani you all the way and i had to witness them get absolutely kicked to the curb whoops pick, funnily enough well i mean you know we can't always be right let's be let's be honest I don't think we I've have never been, been right, right. All the way through, <laughs> ever. <laughs> I got, I got, they got first rounded. My, my, my number one pick. I got, I got, like, they got brutalized, man. It was awful. Oh. They did put up a good fight, though. There was, there was a couple of really good plays. Uh, Slip and uh, Joner. They, they put up a fight in a lot. Like, there was a couple of those were really close, other than the two Brazils, obviously. Right. But that means they just, maybe they just wanted to lose so they could go on the desk. Maybe it was calculated, Ooh. you know? Yeah, join BZO on the desk, BZO and Sporty and the rest of the gang. Yeah, uh, Taquito and um, yeah, I think that's it, right? Taquito. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to, like, I don't know if you if your community knows, like, the in-joke, but uh, Porcupine Duck, who's my brother, is, like, a big Taquito fan. I always hold it over <laughs> his head when I get to meet Taquito. My goodness. I think I remember you talking about that before yeah. when we had a meeting. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he was steaming that day. All right, Mr. Crouton, everybody is in the lobby. Are you ready to do a co-cast for the first time together without any practice? Uh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I would be ready, but I don't think I'm in the match. Hold on. Oh, you have the join party match, you muffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you. Join party match. I'm, I'm going in. I'm, I'm going in deep right now. All right. It's going to be... I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see if, uh, if, if the kind of uh, MM rush... Supremacy continues. I'm good to go. All right. I'm going to let them know to start your engines. All right, Mr. Crouton, will you take us off? Absolutely. Yeah. MM Rush. Is it going to be MM Rush or Pigeon Boys? Again, I just came off the back of watching MM Rush absolutely just walk over the top of uh, Radiance Defined. So it would be nice to see a change of pace here. A bit of a close match. I know you just came off of your. Uh, Absolutely insane seven game thriller. We'll see if this one holds a candle to it. Right off the bat, though, might be seeing a goal here. Is my uh, currently my my in game? <laughs> I'm sorry, my 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 name tags are turned off. I couldn't cast. There we go. I'm good now. <laughs> Did you turn them off and forget that you were that <laughs> you weren't hosting? <laughs> yeah, my overlay's not on. It was I do gross. that all the time, bro. I'm so glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're all good now. Don't worry. Uh, oh, dude, watch out for Jarhead. Red Jarhead. Absolutely insane. Gotta be my number one pick for this match right now. Watch out for that player to watch, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, you got it. I'll definitely keep an eye out. I mean, so far, so far, you know, it's been it's been nice and back and forth. I mean, both teams at least been warmed up, you know, got all their mistakes out of the way, hopefully. And it's maybe going to be a close match. Oh, demo early there. But Mike is holding that defense, even though he's getting taken away by Mohawk himself, the Cinco. Oh, that flick. Just barely. That's heartbreaking. That one goes off the post. But yo, this is a goal for for Cinco. No kidding. Uh, I'm going to tell you, though, you had a good point. They're already warmed up. All the early game, like, kind of mistakes are out of the way. The, 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 the game one jitters, as you might call them, they're, they're gone. They're not nervous anymore. You're, you're going to be seeing Cinco and Jarhead. As well as, the, as well as the players for Pigeon Boys just sink these shots. Uh, no pun intended with Cinco there. Yes, 100%. Uh, I forgot I to update these it. These players are going to kind of be performing at like their, their kind of highest highest gear here as Jarhead looking for that pinch there. Couldn't quite get it. Well, Cinco will be able to put this one in. It is dropping crossbar, though. 
Uh oh. <laughs> Little fakey do there. Near on. <laughs> Gotta love to see those. It, it's unfortunate when you're behind the controller when that happens, but it's funny when it doesn't happen to you in those moments. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I will tell you, all along that same line of the fakes, dude, Cinco had a disgusting fake in the last series. I almost had to kick him off the field. Be like, he was getting 5 to 10 for brutalizing that player like that. <laughs> this shot not quite on the look, look at that look at that we're talking about Cinco he put the shot towards the net this one with the demo on the field maybe looking to open some things up for Pigeon Boys into the corner now he gets he, he takes Cinco out of the play shot towards in towards net I should say towards in that's proper English <laughs> uh, Mike is doing a little back pass here oh <laughs> I don't know what he's doing but you know maybe his jitters are gone maybe we were wrong maybe they're actually nervous because I think they played Rush and Rush was one of the few teams in the whole season that beat the Pigeon Boys because Pigeon Boys only had two losses the whole season. And oh, one of them, right? I believe, was Rush. That's interesting. I believe, uh, I think Raymond Rush is 8-2 and two on the season as well. So these are like coming against the two Titans right now. Yeah, I mean, they weren't both top four uh, bangers for nothing, you know? I mean, these were the oh, yeah. best of the best before they even started the playoffs. I mean, they got to hang out and wait through the whole wild card stage which you know was three weeks of brutality for people trying to make it top eight absolutely yeah and, and it, it's all coming to a head right here here's jar speaking of heads jar head gets past one <laughs> Midnight snag back on that one but does get beat to the side there here's cinco i'm telling you watch out for the there's some sick passing plays that can come in and cinco tried to solo that one despite what i was talking about the passing plays look at look at the touch for jar head oh dude jar heads pinches watch for those he pinches like crazy off the sidewall. He kind of gets beat on that one, though. He goes right off the top. That was a beautiful one. Hey, Sporty, how does Crouton sound now? I turned you up, Crouton. Uh, okay, oh, cool. Yeah. That was on I'm, me. I'm I, I forgot to have you turned up. That's on me. <laughs> Ooh, Cinco. Right, once again, sinking him two up now as, as we're getting the audio issues out of the way. <laughs> MM Rush two up. This is a familiar sight to me. I just saw them absolutely sweep. Like I said, Radiance Define. This is nothing new for me. Gosh, darn. Yeah, nice little bing bong. I mean, only two to zero lead. It's not terrible. So there was another fun pattern in the last um, series as well that I casted. The Pigeon Boys won every odd game. And Dakota won every even game, all the way down to game seven. So I'm hmm. wondering if it's going to be reversed here. Because I'm not going to count them out, the Pigeon Boys, just yet. It's only game oh, one. You know, and Rush yeah. only has a two goal lead. It's not like they're completely decimating right off the gate. But I I'm wondering if that pattern, you know, continues and maybe we get a game seven as well and maybe another upset. Oh, yeah, definitely could be. And oh, look at that shot over the top. Oh. And it's a freebie now. Three up off, off, over over the top of Jarhead's shot there. Right off, right off the back here. Watch, watch him. Right over the top of Snack. And Mike is back there. Lost at midfield, you might say. My goodness. Uh, yeah, it looks like the rush is definitely ready to go. I've been excited for this matchup for a while. I, I don't remember if I casted their first matchup. But if not, I remember watching it and it was it was intense. Like it was crazy how humbling it was for some people in, in you know, one game and then it humbled someone else in the next game because it wasn't like a sweep. It was back and forth. But right now, oh my gosh, Red Jarhead just getting goal number four for Rush. Uh, Crouton, I mean, yeah, Rush is, they are hot right now. They are on fire, lava even. It's it's true. They got it's hot hands right now for Rush four up, and again they're they're just coming off of the back of an absolutely disgusting match. Uh, I, I I gotta feel a little bit for Pigeon Boys. I know they've got some some firepower themselves, but currently being heavily suppressed here by Rush. That's another thing I'll say is just the, the quickness of which you know they, they keep in and turn on offense. That's something you gotta watch out for. Is just how suppressive they are. Speaking of suppressive, that nice little save away there on the goal line. Here's Cinco again. They're they're looking for a fifth goal outlaw. What do you think? Oh, they might get it. They might get it. Oh, maybe not. Hold on, hold on. It's time for one more play. Never mind. Ooh, just kidding. Pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. It was a misinput. <laughs> <laughs> misinput. Yeah. Uh, listen, outlaw. Uh, I'm gonna take this whole minute. I need to switch headsets because this one's about to die. Give me like 20 seconds here. Alrighty. <laughs>
All right, folks. I mean, look at it here. You had 11 shots from MM Rush. Four saves for both teams. Pigeon Boys had five shots. So four of those five shots were saved. The one was when Midnight Sack in the beginning hit that post on the right side, almost getting a goal. I mean, you can see that Rush is definitely putting on a lot more pressure on Pigeon Boys than Dakota was. But we also know that Dakota was popping off in a few games as well. So the the main thing that I see about Pigeon Boys is the second that a team they play against is not, no longer consistent, they take advantage. So if Rush maintains their consistency, Pigeon Boys are going to have a run for their money. But if the MM Rush makes any kind of mistakes here in the series, Pigeon Boys will be there to at least try their best to execute a play and possibly get a shot on net. As game two starts up here and we are waiting for Mr. Crouton Dust to get back. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Crouton. Okay, I, I am back. We're, we're good to go now. The, the emergency headset swap. All righty. It's a little potatoey, but not too bad. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Oh, it went away. I think you're good. All right, let's go right right into the next game. Right on time, too. I, I didn't want to miss a <laughs> second of this. <laughs> I was just making up stuff saying that, you know, you were leaving us forever <laughs> and you don't love us anymore. No, I was actually talking about how Pigeon Boys, um, they're, even though they got beat, what they did against Dakota, because Dakota had some good plays as well. But as soon as one of the teams did a little miscalculation, they were there to execute. But now they're proving me wrong as you literally watch Mike Richin get an own goal and Midnight Sack get a Whiffinator 3000. You want to talk about miscalculations? What would he call that? Um, <laughs> we'll leave it at that one. Yeah, yeah that's about right. <laughs> oh, man. Unfortunate start here. Well, a very fortunate start once again for MM Rush. Again, nothing new. This shot looking good for Red Jarhead there, but will be saved away. A little voice crack as well. Wouldn't be a crouton dust cast without a voice crack. <laughs> Jarhead's still all, all over this one. Nice clear there by Mike, though. Trying to hold that defense strong. We have seen them hold some good defense, at least today and also in the past. But right now, I mean, it's got to be nerfs. But also, it's got to be rushed. They're just so fast. They're so coordinated. They're so on par with their rotations and their pressure. Um, I've barely seen Pigeon Boys have it on Rush's side for more than a few seconds of, like, a little push, and then it just goes right back. Yeah, no, that, that is exactly what was happening to uh, Radiance Divider. This one is going to be oh! in for, for Mike, just as we're talking about the opposite. Probably. We'll see a goal here for Pigeon Boys. But we have a palindrome, like Mr. Crouton. One, three, Ooh, three, three, one. Three, one. Three, yeah. there, it's there a, it I've had that same palindrome in the same game number two in last series. Just saying, kind of weird. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the Pigeon Boys special, you might say. Yes. But it is absolutely. Uh, I, th I think you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said the just the the kind of the, the the speed and the pressure of a uh, of rush. It, it is it is an absolute killer. They can't get off there. Oh, look at the redirect here for Jarhead. No oh pressure needed for that gosh. one. Oh my gosh! Good lord! I got the perfect clip for that. Oh my god! Oh my! Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's one of my buddies in the server flow is SSL. He uh, he mm -hmm. said that to me one time when I was playing hoops. We were playing like GC3s and I dunked one and I like dunking on he, GC3s. He was he was hyping me up big time and I'm like I got to clip this for the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got you got to save it for moments just like that. That was, that was a well placed uh, little clip there. Yes sir, yes sir. Being well placed. This shot may be looking to be well placed. It does get stunted at midfield though. Here's Cinco. Cinco and, uh, oh, look at, look at that shot. And Cinco and Jarhead kind of on the safe wavelength there. He's, he's all the way back now. Look at the the, the pre-read dunk there for Jarhead. The defense, that's something I'll, I'll tell you as well for uh, for Rush. Their defense is just as good as their offense in many ways. Oh, yeah, 100%. And they don't have to show it off very much. <laughs> no, because they're usually too, too busy keeping the pressure on their opponent's side of the field. It's looking like the Pigeon Boys are definitely putting some pressure on, but they just can't finish on their executions and it's definitely hurting them. They're going to have to start putting some towards the net and, you know, getting a little bit tighter on the rotations if they want to try to bring this back against Rush or we could possibly see another sweep. 
100%. Yeah. Ooh, this one, Midnight Snack, just barely off on that one. There, there was an opportunity, but I will say, like, uh, like, the kind of awkward defense that usually is a problem for a lot of teams. Good pinch there for Mike, by the way. Uh, but the, but the, the awkward defense is something that, funnily enough, uh, Rush kind of excels at. Like, they do very well when they're just kind of bumbling around in their own net. They, they, they put up brick walls just haphazardly. It's crazy. As you see right there, uh, Cinco way, way out of pocket there. He, he gets the, the shot off to the, off to the back of the wall there. He, he saves it from quarter field. Yeah, uh, that's right. something that I would not do in C3 GC1 <laughs> for a jump. Like, I would, I would wait a little bit longer before jumping for that ball. But, I mean, they, they have the confidence, you know, and they have the poise, and it's working for them. So if it ain't broke, right? 100 percent yeah no like like you said it, it is working for him again as as strange as it is as you see a, a little bit of an early challenge there from jarhead but look they're getting away with it it's right back over to cinco now it's yeah, just they, the weird they even stuff bumped like them that. out of the way to not let sack get a shot on net like their their teamwork is just impeccable i would even say yeah i, I think i think that's what it all comes down to they can kind of get away with this weird stuff just because they're they're always on the same same wavelength it seems like Good clear way here from Mike, but look, look at the bump on, on Mike there from uh, Jarhead. As Cinco collects this one, is he gonna get this double in? He's oh. bumped by it. Who, who bumped him? I think the air bumped him. I just think he was a little too wide on that. Oh, oh Mike's getting back, getting a little aggressive right back on him. But wait a <laughs> donkey do from the Cinco himself. Three to one, 33 seconds left. They are running out of time. Pigeon boys need two to tie up. My goodness, yeah, donkey do just like you said. I don't, I don't frequent the uh, the, the <laughs> do's a lot, but I got, I got to give you one on that one. Good Heck lord! Yes. <laughs> Heck That's the outlaw special right here. there, baby. Oh yeah. Ooh, look, look, look at the big time touch there from Mike. He gets that one way down there. But how how long will we spend here on the origin? For my money, not very long. It is, it is. We're still down here currently. Red Jarhead. Having to put in a little work here, maybe a little overtime on his back line. They're both back now. There it is. There it goes. The, 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 the pressure leaking as this one hurtling towards the blue net. It won't go in just yet. A snack now off his own back wall. A little bit of a backflip there. It could be disastrous. They will get away with it, though. Outlaw, walk me through what Pigeon Boys must be feeling right now. They... They probably went from excited and hyped that they just barely made it with a kickoff goal in game seven with one second left to beat Dakota when they were getting, you know, outplayed a couple different uh, moments in that game seven series to just playing a team that's just completely different play style than what they were just playing. I feel like maybe they're just having a hard time adapting and they're trying to figure out a way that they can recenter themselves and just put up with such an aggressive offensively and defensively team like rush but it's it's hard to adapt to rush when you're seeing it for yourselves in 4k like they are just insane and it's it's they have to take some deep breaths maybe practice some breathing techniques you know reset every <laughs> game is a new game you know what i mean like like how I am, like if anything ever gets me mad, I kind of walk, well, I walk away, come right back, and, and it's like nothing ever happened. I'm, I have a smile on my face again. So they kind of have to do that same kind of concept between games here. Because if you let the game behind you, you know, dictate how you're going to play the next one, it's just going to be brutal to your mindset, and it might not be beneficial for them, you know? Oh, yeah, 100%. Like like you said, the, the mental is, is if you lose the mental, you've lost on the field. There's nothing you can do about it. They, they've got to stay level-headed. They've got to stay in it mentally, like like you said. Uh, I will say something that kind of turned it around a little bit. Again, it was still a, ended up in a sweep, but something that kind of turned it around a little bit in the mid-series for uh, Radiance Define. They just started going, man. They were they were like speedy, like almost ball chasing. That's That might be uh, what, what Pigeon Boys might be looking to do here because you see, look, look at this shot just oh, dropping oh, in already. Oh, oh. Baba Booey. What a touch. <laughs> and and yeah. you saw Jarhead was up on that already. That's the kind of speed I'm talking about, man. They they're just up on everything. It's hard to beat them. The 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 confidence they have when they go up in the air is just barred and none. And look at this breakaway right off the kickoff. <laughs> An early two goal lead, only 23 seconds into game three. And Rush is crushing it. It should be called MM Crush because that's what they're doing. Uh, 
truer words have never been spoken out well absolutely mm crush just absolutely stomping the competition right now they have uh pitcher boys have they scored yet or, or has have they kept them at zero they, uh, they scored right they Mike, scored Mike once goal. yes I, either way they are absolutely suppressing them and, and somehow you, you'd think to suppress a team like pigeon boys you have to play a lot of defense they're 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 going with the old adage the best defense is a heavy offense uh, evidently here's cinco now cinco gets beat on this one hold on having to play a little defense now as red jar as the voice cracks for the second time i told you to watch <laughs> out for that i just updated their name to mm crush for the overlay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah no that like <laughs> I mean, it, like it's, you, it just makes sense. I mean, look at it. Red Jar has a beautiful yeah. clear off the backboard, takes it halfway down the field, almost getting it past the whole defense. A little passing play, but Mike's going to hit it in for Red Jar head. Try to do the early pre-jumps as well, but it just backfires literally right in the net, three to zero. I think you're right. I think Pigeon Boys just have to go for it full send. And if they don't, MM Crush is going to keep crushing, and I just got raided by Valor with 60 people. Ooh, they're, they're witnessing an absolute beatdown right now. Like like you said, it's a good thing you changed that name to MM Crush is all. Oh, Mike almost gets a touch there. That, that could have been a little bit goaded. Here's Cinco all the way to the back wall. Getting a little bump from behind, though. That pigeon chasing tail right now. Valor, thank you for the raid, by the way. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good stream. We are casting playoffs for 2v2, C1 to C2 for the Skyward Series. And right now, MM Rush, AKA MM Crush, is crushing it against the Pigeon Boys who just won in game seven in the quarterfinals. Yeah, no, and, and that, that streak of dominance, uh, and in case anyone missed it, they had two Brazils, uh, that being MM Rush in their last series. Like, it'll be very much uh, uh, to a similar beat here as they're kind of just, I don't know, true to name, they're crushing. <laughs> Pigeon boys right now. They're not giving them any bread at all. These pitchers are going hungry in terms of goals. They've only got one so far between the, the between the matches that have already elapsed. Here's Jarhead. Watch out for the uh the clears for Jarhead. Ooh, midnight snack. Way to get up on that one. Kind of shuts that one down. Yeah, it's looking like they're it's looking like Crush is like, you know, pulling back a little bit. But it's not it's not hurting them at all. It's like they're just being a little bit more cautious, maybe because they have a three goal lead. They're not never mind. I, I take that back. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be quiet over here in the corner. <laughs> that, that demo from Cinco ripped that mic out of your hands in, in, in live time. He, he didn't like what you were saying. No, they did not. Good Lord, like we are called MM Crush. Don't you forget it, sir. But all right, I didn't forget. My bad. My bad. <laughs> It is just as brutal as it, as it was an hour ago when I was seeing a very similar story here. Uh, another voice crack, by the way. Uh, Pigeon Boys, though, to their credit, they're, they're kind of keeping pace a lot better than uh, the Radiance Define was at, like, at this point in the series. It took Radiance Define like four games to start like catching up a little bit in terms of the speed. If Pigeon Boys can just like make a, make the adjustment right now, just start, like for lack of a better term, really ball chasing it's going to really do them a lot of good in the long term. The longer it takes them to adjust, the worse and worse is going to get. This one oh. drops down almost in. Seiko can't slot it either. Midnight stack with a good clear way to Mike. They're braiding up the middle. It will be Jarhead on it next, though. Yes, here comes Jarhead. He's going to try to do a little fakey do, but Mike holds the gym strong, not allowing another goal to go in. But with a minute 35 on the clock, the Pigeon Boys really got to step up their bird gang to get some, some moves made. But with all those Whippinator 3000s, oh my gosh, wait a second. Open net still there, and it's five to zero with 125 on the clock. Bezo even said MM Crush in the chat. Valor, thank you again for the raid so much. I appreciate you. Love you always. It is, uh, I'm, I'm glad Bezio's in chat. He, he might have some, uh, he might have some insight in the chat as to exactly what's happening here. Bezio knows what it's like to be on the receiving end of a beatdown and give one. He knows exactly what's happening here. It's five up right now. Pigeon boys are in a bad way. They need, they need to get in the air a little bit more, like, like based on their name. Uh, right now, it's uh, a lot of MM Rush just beating them on fundamentals. Just ground plays. Nice dunk here oh, for Midnight Stack, though. Nice goal. Wait a second. We have to ask the question now, Crouton. MM Crush only needs two more goals to get a Brazil. Do you think that's going to happen in game three? No, it's not going to happen. 
It's not going to happen. Why? No, that 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 goal right there for Midnight Snack is a big time turning point for Pigeon Boys. I'm calling it right now. They're, they're going to they're going to come back in one minute. I'm telling you. They're going to take flight in a big way. You know what I'm saying? Here's here, oh, Jarhead doesn't doesn't want them to. He's trying to shut them down early. Midnight Snack now shot in. No good, though. This is an easy clear way for Cinco. Cinco still all over this one. My my uh, outlandish prediction looking more and more outlandish by the second. Yes, uh, keep going, sir. I am dealing with the chat real quick. Oh, yeah, I got you. Right. Here's here's Mike, though. They're, they're going the right way. But look, Cinco even backwards is holding these to midfield. He's just not letting them through. Now Jarhead off the back. Well, I said, watch out for those big time clears. Here's a pinch in for Mike. But look, Cinco does not let it through. They're just holding them. That They're building brick walls on that goal line. And, and they've got rocket launchers on offense, too. There's just no way th through them. I, I had the prediction that that might have been a turning point, but I've already been proven wrong as Midnight Snack and uh, and Mike have, have yet to build on that. They just took their one goal lead. It will end 5-1. to one. Another pretty brutal match here. Yes, a great and match. Cinco, they're, they're, they're looking really good right now. They're riding high. They really are. I mean, we're moving into game four. I mean, do you think that Pigeon Boys are going to take a W in this series? Do you think they're going to at least take game four and bring this to a game five? Or do you think Rush is going to get another sweep? I don't want this to be the case, but I, I do want to be right. I mean, MM Rush, they're unstoppable right now. It, they are absolutely running through. That. I mean, they ran through the Def Radiance Defined. It was my personal pick to win the whole thing. And they're currently ripping through Pigeon Boys. It's I I don't see anyone beating them really for the for the remainder of the tournament. Honestly, MM Rush is crazy. Like you said, they they're hot right now. They got the hot hands. They're they're draining threes, sinking threes with Cinco on the team. It's it's a double entendre. Yes. I mean, Topher does make up a good point. Like you were saying as well, Pigeons are starting to get better every game at slowing them at least. But I mean, they need to really step it up this game. They have to push hard with every maneuver. But right off the kickoff yet again, Cinco is just crushing <laughs> the Pigeon Boys. <laughs> It, it, it is bad timing right there as Mike was kind of close on that one, but there's no reading that it comes. It comes straight down off that crossbar. You, you'd have you'd have better luck flipping a coin. Either way, we, it's a very familiar sight. What, what, what's what's the uh, what's the score here? Oh, MM Rush is winning. No surprises there. Yes. Kind one to zero. There. You see Cinco with a, with a rare L there. He kind of drops that one. A nice snack. Now racetrack is it? Look, look he racetrack and, and Jarhead just reads it easy. And, and this is something as well I want to point out. Generally, the idea is not to play defense from your corner, right? They, they, Jarhead and Cinco almost exclusively play defense from their corner. They challenge like way too early, but it somehow always works out. It's yeah, insane. it makes no sense to me because in C3 GC1, that would not work. But in this rank, it really shouldn't work either. But it works for them because they're just so darn fast. Their recoveries are fantastic for their rank. And I think that's what helps them execute their plays expeditiously as 100 percent, yeah good adjective there i like that <laughs> i mean that it's very fitting as a uh, as we're seeing more of that corner defense here look at the look at jar he's up he's up there for a year he's already got it down a whiff there well we'll kind of make things awkward for both teams you, you might have thought that jarhead could have turned on that one but he was reading the clear away speaking yeah. of clears away midnight stack now all over this one jarhead stunts it again but mike will find his way through cinco's back though he does send horizontal could be a shot in for mike the shot is towards net but Ooh. it will be saved away once again the haphazard defense working well my goodness they are just not letting anything it looks like they're not going to be there for the defensive plays oh and they weren't i am so smart i can literally predict the future pigeon boys have scored the first goal since game two in game four and they tied it one to one, but there's 326 on the clock. All right, Kutan, is Senko gonna get a kickoff goal with Jarhead right now? Nope, definitely not. And I, I, <laughs> I waited till I could see the result. And midnight <laughs> smack, smack, midnight smack. Yeah, he might get a face off goal here, but I, I do I do want to say outlaw, get out that crystal ball and become a fortune teller. You were talking about them not being there for the defense and immediately they get dunked on. <laughs> I don't know how I have these superpowers. It must be the Caster's Curse <laughs> live in 4K brought to you by Skyward Series. 
we will have to see how this one progresses though as it's currently for the first time it, it's it's a pretty even tie here this will almost brace the tie does Cinco there another rare miss is is are we seeing signs of mm rush slowing down a little bit are we gonna have to change that out of crush back to just regular rush they're certainly not living up to that title currently as he sends this one straight horizontal but almost gets a double shot in oh. will be saved away by jarhead though again that haphazard defense just somehow works beyond all scientific explanation 56 boost here for Jarhead. He sends it over to Cinco. Cinco off the back wall. They're playing like, like what, what is that? They're just playing like Pong with it on their own Hello? back line and it ends up in a goal. He bangs that all the way three quarters down the field. Mike and not back <laughs> yet. Oh, I feel like that was just an unfortunate push. I think they should. Uh, he should have waited a little bit longer for Mike to get back before midnight pushed that. But at the same point, I understand why he's pushing it because he knows what MM Rush is capable of. And like, why wouldn't you try to push as early as possible? Look at Cinco go. Hello? <laughs> Spitty news <laughs> all the way across the flipping map. Jiminy Crickets. Oh, uh, no. And I, I, I'll get a little serious here while we're watching the absolute circus from Cinco. Uh, it is just absolutely there in all hole because of that catch 22. If you don't go, you're getting scored on and if you do go you're out of position it is an absolute zero sum game right now for pigeon boys they're in deep water this one the water about to get even deeper the post will oh. save him on that one and with the demo he's gonna get a, oh what a save what a save Nick. from midnight sack that was closer as close as it could get to not going in the net that was beautiful. I mean, they're trying to just at least hold the one goal deficit they have right now until they can regather themselves and possibly put another one on. But MM Crush is still up by one with only a minute 15 on the clock. This is going to be tight. I don't know. We, we might see a game five. We might because it's looking like they are slowing down a little bit. Never mind. Just take Ooh. it back again. I'm going to go over here. Goodbye. Uh, I was gonna say I was with you man like one minute is plenty of time but against a team like MM crush and you really got to hit that you really got to hit that the, the cuss sound crush man they are at, like like a like a soda can they're stomping them flat right now they're only up by two it's not it's not as drastic as they make it sound but it really just feels like it, it like even from the caster booth it feels like a, a lot more of a deficit than it really is like I can feel the, the, the panic that pigeon boys are feeling it's radiating off of them and there, there's no way out for him at this point i mean 45 seconds left and it, the, the goal just goes up by one more he's gonna get this double right he absolutely oh Cinco my doesn't gosh miss. he really doesn't i mean yeah you can still feel the heat coming off of mm crush as well <laughs> like i'm sweating watching them sweat themselves in this game this is insane so especially if on my stream to watch a game seven matchup to then go to a sweep, but you're like, hey, this is the second sweep I've watched. <laughs> so like outlaw, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like this just happened and it's just happening again. Yeah, a, a massive case of deja vu for the, for the old crouton dust here. But again, I have to imagine it, it must be really like jarring for the, for you and your viewers to, to like you said, pigeon boys battle it out all the way to game seven almost a game seven overtime if i remember correctly and now it's it's an absolute uh, it's an absolute beat down that's all that's all it is we haven't seen a brazil luckily enough as a as, uh, earlier radius to find had to deal with two of those but it's still just they have been brutalized here by cinco and jr had this one could be an offensive opportunity there's a demo now as well Oh, keeping it up. No, and that's going to be it. MM Rush will take the W for sweep number two. Crouton had the pleasure of watching both of these, but GG's all the way. Pigeon Boys, listen, y'all still had an amazing season, and y'all still made it to the semifinals of Challenger 2v2. That is something to definitely be proud of. Please make sure you hold those pigeon heads high because y'all are still amazing players. But MM Crush just came out and crushed it tonight, and they're moving on to the finals. Mr. Crouton, I'm going to bring us back to our lovely faces for a few seconds before we move this stream over to Skyward. Anything else you would like to add? Um... What do you think is going to happen in the final game? I, I know you're probably voting for Rush at this point, but what do you think the series score is going to be for the last game? I mean, 
it's it's gonna sound like like, like one of those you know i'm known for my kind of outlandish takes right but i mean they're they're gonna sweep aren't they like i don't i don't see them uh, i don't see them dropping games man no for the rest I of the for the rest of, of the weekend i don't see uh, i don't see them losing no Even one match <laughs> and if they don't they only give up one like that's like oh yeah it'd be a 4-1 gentleman sweep at at the Absolutely. worst case my goodness. That's, that's another thing too is, is like you said i mean pigeon boys what what a what a not only what a season but what a night before they came up against the brick wall here what a night they had i mean like you said they they, they have to be holding their heads high after that one but it's gotta be it's got like it's gotta be tough coming off of like like that just absolute battle to game seven to, to just get absolutely kind of steamrolled here it, it's it's definitely unfortunate but man they put up a fight it was it was great to see yeah agreed but all right, uh, folks, listen, we're going to raid this over to the Skyward Series for the finals. If you're cheering for Wesco, if you're cheering for Red Jarhead, make sure you support them in the stream. If you're not following the Skyward Series Twitch, make sure you drop a follow. Make sure you drop Crouton a follow as well. Uh, is it with the zero or without? I forget. I think it's just Crouton does underscore. And Valor, thanks again for the 60 bomb raid. I appreciate you. Love you very much. I'll send you a DM after this. But everybody, have a great rest of your night. We'll see you there in the finals. Congratulations. Love y'all. Peace out.